Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 130, and we're gonna start off this show the same way all awkward conversations do, talking about the weather. Aaron, it is raining cats and dogs. It's it's bonkers, man. Yeah, man. It sucks. Yeah. There you go. So now we're gonna talk about the sharks. Uh, <laughs> in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the blockbuster trade that happened. I don't know if you guys uh, caught this one or not, but we'll be talking about that. We'll should be we, talking about. Should we get up and dance around? Like no, we shouldn't. No. <laughs> Seventh, yeah. No. Uh, we, now we're going to talk about the uh, the games on uh, the the road trip. They're still yeah. got a game to go, but uh, the four games uh, that happened this past week. Yep. And what else are we can talk about? Uh, we'll cover some of the stats from that and get a little more in depth. Uh, we'll talk about Carolina trolling and then getting <laughs> trolled. <laughs> Uh, Seattle Kraken opened their new arena and, and had their first game. We'll talk a little bit about that and show some pictures. And uh, we have November coming up, and we'll talk about the next games coming up. Aaron had a lot more things to talk about just there than I did. I'm a little jealous. But uh, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, I'm going to uh, paraphrase a very brilliant hockey mind uh, who recently said, I'm putting my foot down. The Sharks are going to make the playoffs, and they're not going to get bounced in the first round. That's aggressive. It's happening. is still a possibility. You can't quote yourself. I can. And doesn't, I just... doesn't work that I way. I just did. It happened. Deal with it. Okay. Are we going to talk about the weather next? Because that was awkward. Anyway, the blockbuster trade that we're referring to, obviously not a blockbuster trade. Dylan Gambrell gets sent to none other than Ottawa uh, for the seventh round pick. Happened to be the Sharks seven round pick that they're getting back now. Is that a little trolling? I don't going know. Going on there? Is that... I, don't, I didn't think about it until just now. We, we'll, we'll get to, to some trolling later on, as we kind of mentioned before. But, uh, you know, some fans actually saying not too happy about it, saying, you know, gosh, that's it. That's all. And I'm going, it's it's Dylan <laughs> Gambrell. How many times has this guy passed through waivers and it's not been a problem? No one's claimed him before. So to be able to get anything for Dylan Gambrell, uh, not such a bad thing. I always think it's so silly when teams do this, right? Like, it's a player that goes up and down, clears waivers, why didn't they just put a waiver claim on him and get him for free <laughs> yeah. instead of trading away an asset? So it's kind of weird. But uh, glad the Sharks got something for practically nothing, yeah. I think. And they do really well at those seventh round picks. So I'm sure Joe Will is very excited about getting that <laughs> seventh round pick back. Free seventh, yay! Yeah. Uh, no, but but with uh, with Gambrell, the thing with Gambrell was, you know, Jasper Weatherby has kind of taken over that 4C position. And even then, they were talking about, uh, I forget his first name, but Reedy. I think it's Scott, maybe. Scott. Yeah. Scott Reedy. Uh, he was a guy that was in contention for that 4C position mm -hmm. as well. So Gambrell not only got passed up, but he got passed up by the guy who maybe would be backing up the guy who passed him up. So it just doesn't make sense to have to keep him around. He's a fourth line guy. He's never really going to be more than a fourth line guy on this team. Mm -hmm. Unless again, like I said, Benino goes down, then you could bring him in. But then again, you see how Weatherby's been playing. You could probably slot him into the 3C if Benino goes down and then bring Scott Reedy up. And you're not yeah. really missing that much by not having Gambrell there, if anything at all. No, and don't forget, this guy started as the third line center a year ago. So uh, kind of a fall from grace for him. I feel yeah. I feel bad for him. Not not like trying to knock him, but yeah. um, he needs to get his uh, play together. He was he had what four games in the AHL and <laughs> only or three games, three games, four penalty minutes. Yeah. So not really getting on the score sheet. Uh, maybe this can turn into a Barkley Goodrow scenario where he dropped down to the minors all the yeah. way to the fourth line of the minors and then came back and now he's got two rings and yeah. laughing at everyone. But uh, good on you, Barkley. <laughs> Miss you, buddy. I don't think Ottawa's trading Gambrell for a first, though. No. Just saying. No. Credit but, where credit's due on that one. Anyway, right. continue. Um, yeah, uh, this. I think Gambrell was signed because they had to meet, the Sharks had to meet the requirements for the Kraken uh, expansion draft. So he was one of the guys, and I'm, most people had Gambrell kind of picked as the one that would get taken by Seattle. And Seattle, like, didn't take anyone that anybody <laughs> thought they were going to take. So uh, they ended up with Alex True. So Gambrell was still in the Sharks. I don't think that the Sharks were expecting him to be there, and he just got surpassed. And it's kind of a numbers game because um, the Sharks in the last two drafts have had very good picks, very high, higher picks than normal. Um, so a lot of these guys are going to pass on the depth chart in the next year or two, and we're seeing it with Weatherby right now. I mean, he was a 2020 pick. It was mm -hmm. just not this last draft, but the one before. Um, he's already cracking the lineup and looking looking solid, I'd say. Yeah. He's, he's doing pretty well. He's So there's a question on Twitter, like what – we asked people what they wanted to ask us, and one of them was, what rookie are you most kind of 
impressed with. And to me, it's Weatherby, I think, more than Eklund. I mean, Eklund's great, yeah. and he's going to be even better. But right now, Weatherby just seems to be the complete package, all-around best player that's playing in the NHL, and he's deserving it every night. It's not like they're handing it to him. So um, good on him for, for sticking in the lineup <laughs> at yeah. this young age. Yeah, no, 100%. And the person who had asked that question actually said, uh, keep in mind that Middleton is still considered a rookie. I think Middleton stepped in. He's done a marvelous job. But mm-hmm. I kind of have to agree with you here. I think Weatherby, even though it's you know a fourth-line center position, I think he's the guy that's kind of stepped in and surpassed the expectations uh, being able to make the NHL roster. I don't think many people had him slotted as the guy that, that was going to be playing NHL minutes, let alone um, getting points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? fourth-line guy, but he's playing power play time, yeah. too. So he's he's not just getting six, seven, eight minutes a night. He's right. getting probably closer to 12, I think, with the power play time in there. So they're, And he's scoring. Yeah. Uh, it's working. Yeah. So he's, he's adding to the... Uh, lineup and and making the team better. Yeah, and not to take away from Eklund, like you said, um, I think the expectations for Eklund are that he's going to be that star type player. Mm-hmm. Maybe not right away, obviously, but this is kind of what we were hoping for, to see from him. Uh, with Weatherby, he just kind of came out of nowhere. So for him to be able to make the roster and to be able to push forward like he's been doing, um, really impressive stuff. So to answer your question, that's kind of our pick is, is Weatherby. There you go. Um, so now let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk a little bit about the games. Uh, there's still one game left on the road trip, but the four that we had uh, this past week here, uh, starting off in Montreal, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a phenomenal game, I would say. Now there's some reasons maybe why uh, the Stanley Cup finalist team uh, got beat 5 nothing. By the San Jose Sharks. Yeah. God, I love saying that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some reasons there, right? Price was right. gone. Right? Carey he Price is gone. He, he's not injured. He's he's in the substance oh. abuse program. Right, sorry. Uh, so he's kind of out and definitely not really a timetable. I think the minimum is 30 days to right. start that program. Uh, so best wishes to him. I mean, yeah. that's, that's something that you need to take care of. Um, and then Shea Weber is another guy, you know, their captain. Um, and he, from what the GM has been saying, doesn't sound like he's ever going to play in the NHL again. Like, it sounds like his career is done, and it's very sad. Another yeah. sad situation yeah. going on. Um, and then there's Kokaniemi. Kokaniemi. <laughs> Kokaniemi. I, not gonna work anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna get a little bit into that later with with Carolina. Yeah. Um, uh, they <laughs> sent him an offer sheet, and there's a whole trolling thing going on there because. Uh, for what was it? Uh, a couple years ago, Montreal sent Sebastian Aho a uh, an offer sheet, and mm-hmm. they had to match it, which they did. So he ended up staying in Carolina. So Carolina was pissed about this, and they went back after uh, Coca Niemi and sent him a one year ridiculous offer for a guy that should not be making that much money. And Montreal said, "Sure, yeah. we'll take the picks." And so he's gone, and now he's in Carolina. Um, and they also put a signing bonus of twenty dollars, which is Sebastian Ajo's number, just to <laughs> kick it in there to make sure that they knew, right? This is the level of pettiness that I think Absolutely. the NHL needs. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think there are a bunch of jerks from going back a couple years ago. I think that was the yeah. slogan, right? Yeah. And, uh, and that came from um, Don Cherry. Don Cherry, blanking on his name, um, who is also not working here anymore. Right. <laughs> That's a whole other situation. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, anyway, and then Deneau is another guy. Philip Deneau was yeah. kind of their like their solid third line specialist who uh, shut down the other team, and I think he is missed more than they thought he would be. Mm-hmm. And he signed with the LA Kings, so he's been long gone too. So you take those four guys out of that lineup, that's a pretty solid group that you're yeah. taking out that you can't really replace exactly. So um, yeah, this Montreal Canadiens team is much much different than it was. In the finals, yeah, no, and good to see that honestly, because again, we get the five zero win. Um, Sharks start off on the right foot there in the road trip, and then we'll be seeing them uh, later on, which is happening this week. We'll talk about that uh, at the end of the show here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ottawa, however, uh, I had called this one. Yeah, they're definitely going to win in Ottawa. This was the closest game I think out of all, out of all the games there. Yeah. It was a two one win, um, and you said Josh Norris. Uh, was was talking to the media before the game there, and uh, he had some choice words. Yeah, so Josh Norris was in, was drafted by the Sharks, uh, the second round, I believe, mm-hmm. and he was in part of the trade for Carlson. So this goes back a couple years. Um, the Sharks haven't played Ottawa in two years because they didn't play last year against them during the shortened COVID season. So uh, Josh Norris wasn't on the team two years ago. Uh, he was last year, and this is the first game against the Sharks that he's ever played. So they asked him if he was kind of, you know, as a kind of former Shark, yeah. even though he never suited up for the Sharks, um, if he was excited. And he, he was like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be lying. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I wouldn't be lying if I said I wasn't. Like, I'm pretty jacked up to play against these guys. So um, 
yeah, I was expecting a good game out of him, and, yeah. and he hit the post, I think, one or two times in that game. So he had he had his chances and, and looked good. Um, but this is a game where the Sharks were down one nothing, right? Yeah. They scored up quick, uh, and they held on and, and ended up coming back and winning 2-1. to one. And the reason I said, I think, last week that I wasn't so sure about Ottawa is uh, Eric Carlson has not really had a good game in Ottawa since he left. He, I don't know if it's the jitters or what, but... Mm. Um, and then the last two years, the team just was not playing well with Eric Carlson. Um, so they just been getting spanked in Ottawa. So yeah. I wasn't so sure about this game, but they were able to pull it off and it looked like a completely different team to me. Yeah, I was I was very confident going into that game thinking, you know, okay, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> nail Ottawa down because they looked like they were playing well, right? Yeah. And uh, that just wasn't the case. It was, uh, it was a bit of a struggle. So, hey, good on Ottawa. You know, they've uh, they've been pretty bad for uh, quite a while, and they're they're getting their rejuvenation going now with some of the younger players stepping up and uh, getting some time and whatnot developing. So, you know, good on them. Hopefully the Sharks kind of get to be able to do the same thing with some of their young players, uh, get them up and coming uh, and a little I mean, more. This is, I mean, I'm going to go off a little yeah. tangent here, but this is a good illustration of what a rebuilding team looks like versus a retooling team. Um, Doug Wilson likes to use the word retooling, yeah. and I think Becker even mentioned like they would never do a full rebuild. This is exactly what Ottawa did: is they dismantled the team, they traded Carlson, got all these assets, moved a bunch of other pieces mm-hmm. out, and slowly have been getting better. But I mean, this is years now of Ottawa just not being good yeah. um, and getting high draft picks, and they're still not quite there. I mean, they are much better; they're a young team that are coming together. But who knows? I mean, the way that the owner and, and the GM are over there, like. They'll probably be good, make playoffs maybe for a season or two, and then they'll start selling off and yeah. doing it over again. So yeah. it's just kind of it's a different um, take, a different different uh, strategy, I guess, for a rebuild. I don't think the Sharks would ever be able to sustain a full rebuild. Um, part of it is how many other sports teams are in the Bay Area right now that you're competing with, right? Right. You got the San Francisco Giants, the Oakland A's, the San Francisco 49ers, the Golden State Warriors. Uh, missing one. Quakes. San Jose Earthquakes. To some degree. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. I feel like I'm missing. The Raiders are gone, so yeah. that, that's not really a competition anymore. But my point being, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hardcore fans in, in each team, and then there's a lot of bandwagon fans that will catch a game here and there. And those are the kind of the fans that you want to get, that they need to get into this game. So when the Sharks are winning, they're going to be selling out. When they're not winning, nobody's going to be going to the game. Nobody's going to be buying any tickets even the resale tickets Mm -hmm. you can say the same for practically all the other sports all the other teams too i mean the warriors were garbage for a long time before kind of you know then they drafted curry and then they got better same with the giants i mean the giants hadn't won a world series before 2010 they hadn't won since i don't remember the 50s or something like that so um it they it was easy to get a ticket and now the giants were like the best team it was impossible to get a ticket so it's just that's the way it kind of it works so if the sharks were to ever do do a full rebuild like that they would be completely devastated uh financially and it just would never work so for all the people that are still out there wanting a full rebuild it's just not going to happen so anyway moving on no it's it's a fair point really it is Uh, and and honestly like it sucks to have to watch a rebuild and you ask people in buffalo because they've been rebuilding forever Mm -hmm. uh i don't think the sharks fans want that as much as as it would help the team to have like nice young uh, high-end draft picks uh, into the system um it's no one's going to want to sit there and watch those games Mm -hmm. so um though the fan base sometimes cries for it i don't think they really really want it so (laughs) Uh, in any case, moving on to Toronto, Toronto, a powerhouse team. This was a game that uh, you would call the scheduled loss. I agreed with you, um, but it wasn't the case. It's good to be wrong sometimes. I love being wrong yeah. when I'm negative, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> the Sharks end up winning this one by a score of 5-3. to three. Again, I think a game where they started off behind, right? They did, yeah. and uh, you could see the legs were getting a little sluggish mm-hmm. in parts of the game. Um, I think I was tweeting that out, too. Like You just notice they're getting beat to pucks. They're not winning the 50-50 battles. Um, getting just foot speed is just wasn't quite there. Um, so I think they did a, an admirable job of, of kind of holding off because they're a juggernaut team offensively. Yeah. Yeah. Defensively, I don't think they're quite as good. Obviously, they, they you know, let in, was it four goals in an empty netter? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was closer. Five to three makes it sound worse. It was four to three yeah. plus an empty netter. So it was a close game. Um, this is a different team. The Sharks would have collapsed a, the last two years. That Those teams would have collapsed in this situation. So good on them for going into Toronto, which is a very tough place to play in, with a full crowd and coming out with uh, two full points. Yeah, not, not giving anything. It doesn't matter. They're not a division rival anyway, but still 
uh, giving the other team nothing. Getting those so. row. Oh yeah, those row wins, man. Those row wins are gonna add up at the end. So this is good. Good on Absolutely. the Sharks. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Unfortunately, uh, the streak comes to an end. Uh, the Sharks are currently four one and zero uh, their record because of the loss to Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins. Now we we saw the Boston Bruins on paper and we thought, yeah, this is gonna be a really rough game. Now we didn't call this a loss necessarily. We said it was gonna be tough, uh, but to give them some credit here, the Sharks went down four to one. It was the third period, and then late in the third, actually, they mm-hmm. started kind of really buckling down and and getting some back. It, they end up losing by a score of four to three, uh, but they never gave up. And back to your point about Toronto, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is a team that didn't buckle, didn't uh, they? They kept pushing forward. I'll say, okay. So for them to not kind of just throw the towel in, not kind of just give up. Ah, you know we're uh, you know we're down four to one against this juggernaut team. Let's just get out of here, let's go to the next game, right? Um, that's kind of what I feel the team maybe would have done uh, even just as, as soon as last season. Absolutely. This is, like you said, it's a different team. They've mm-hmm. got a different mentality. I think Logan Couture had said, you know, we're having fun again. We're, um, you know, it's fun to play again. And some people took that as a jab at Kane. We're not going to go there right now. But I think, you know, to your point, it, it is a different team. They are motivated to keep pushing through. They don't let the... That being down by a goal or by three goals in this case, mm-hmm. you know, get them down and out of a game. So um, it's a different mentality, and it's something that I think a lot of Sharks fans have honed in on. They recognize it, and they're proud of it, even though it comes up with a regulation loss. Yeah, I was very happy that they came back. Um, to me, it was like they never gave up. They played pretty much a full 60, whereas Boston, if you look at the, in the Boston point of view, I mean, they gave up the second goal with six minutes left and it's like oh we're up four to two now oh man and then a, a minute later yeah. minute and a half later oh wow it's it's four to three like we better buckle down and and really get the win out of here and the sharks had a couple chances at the end even the last minute to tie it up yeah um, was it barabanov that so missed barabon that that should have happened like way early it was like even in the first period but um it was a it was wide open I and mean, it was a power play opportunity oh, yes fires it off the pads yeah. um barabano's right there he's got a full four by six he's staring at the entire net do you notice it was a timo or couture started celebrating oh yeah uh i want to say weatherby or weatherby i think it might have been weatherby Weatherby. they raised their hands they were on the far <laughs> left side and co and uh uh, Barabanov was on the other side yeah. and he lifted his hands and celebrated. I saw her getting excited yeah. and celebrating. I'm like, wait, the puck's behind the goal. Because he shot it and it hit the outside <laughs> yeah. net. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I couldn't believe it. And it's like, it's too bad because, you know, again, it's, it's Barabanov. He's getting his shot, right? He's the guy that's mm-hmm. stepping in for William Eckling. Let me just talk about that for just a second here. How nice is it to have a guy, even though he didn't he didn't put that one in, and I'm gonna call him out for it. How nice is it to have a guy that's waiting in the wings who can step into the top six when you want to give your young guy a break, right? Or let's say he is only getting those nine games. Let's say he peters out over the course of the next five, and they're like, you know what? Let's just let's hold off on this for now. We we love what we're seeing, but let's get a little bit more development first. Where do you get that offense from? Well, I think it's a guy like Barabanov. Mm-hmm. And I think he steps right into that spot and is able to produce. Now, unfortunately, again, he <laughs> missed a four by six, and it would have changed the game. I think at that point it would have been two, two to one. one. Yeah. So um, it's just unfortunate, and who knows how the rest of the game would have unfolded. But that's a momentum grabber, right? Mm-hmm. For you to be able to step right back in, um, especially on the power play. Like, in the, the first period, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got plenty of time. If they mm-hmm. score another goal or two, you've got plenty of time to start crawling back. So um, it's just a really big missed opportunity for me. But again, um, nice to have a guy that can step in and play. That's the difference between good teams and great teams is having the depth. And I like that depth, having mm-hmm. Barabanov switching out with Eklund. And that's going to extend Eklund's nine-game tryout, too. So it'll, it'll go you know, however many games he yeah. plays. If they decide to send him down or send him back, he could go back to Sweden, too. So we don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know... I think it was great to give Eklund a break, too, mm-hmm. um, just so he can kind of see from the press box a different point of view of what the Sharks look like. Um, they'll, you'll see that for a lot of the times with younger players. I wouldn't be surprised at some point if Weatherby is going to get in the press box or somebody else that's, that's yeah. on the younger side. So um, it's not a big deal. Don't don't think too much into Eklund getting scratched or anything. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, I like Barabanov's game. I like him as a player. Yeah. I like what he brings to the Sharks because – to me, it's like uh, it's more creativity. It's he's he's very creative with the puck and and elusive with the puck. And I don't think they have a lot of Sharks players like that. Eklund mm-hmm. is one of them. Yeah. But they don't have a lot of those kinds of 
playmakers and uh, creative players. So I, I like that the aspect of what it brings into the lineup. Yeah, and I, I like that you brought up depth, and that's what makes mm -hmm. teams teams good, right? And being able to have him step in, but also, like you said, if Weatherby needs to take a night off, they had their eye on Scott Reedy, mm -hmm. and they got rid of Gambrell, but they have Reedy there. So um, there's still a little bit of depth there. We're talking fourth line in this case, right. but still a guy that can step in and play the role, right? Mm -hmm. um, a guy that's also stepped in and played the role quite well, uh, Reimer. Reimer has done a phenomenal job, I think, in, in the pipes. Uh, today, he uh, relieved Aiden Hill after yep. the second period. And when he stepped in, it was already 4-1, to wasn't it? it yeah, was, so, yeah, so he didn't let anything in, uh, in the net. So he did a really good job. And this is exactly why Doug Wilson went out and got Reimer. Yeah. Is because he needs a guy that's going to be that solid when my starter, because we Hill's the starter, I think, here, okay? So when my starter isn't doing too well or needs you know, to, to take a night off or needs to get pulled, I need to throw somebody in there that I can trust. And I think Reimer is that guy, and I think he showed it today. Yeah, and I think we talked about this kind of going into the season. I thought it would be Hill every two games and then Reimer for every game, which is kind of what it was, yeah. I think, right? They, he started the first two, then Reimer came in. Reimer is a very good, solid, I would say, a 1A, 1B goalie. He's sure. a 1B um, not quite ready for prime time being a full-time starter, but at the same time, when he comes in, he's going to be solid. He's going to give you a good game, um, and you're going to have, come from a, a backup goalie, you're going to have a very good chance to get a win, yeah. which is exactly what every NHL team would want for their backup. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with Reimer, and I like his game as well. Absolutely. You know, a lot of fans saw this Boston game as the game that's going to show us whether or not the Sharks can stack up against the powerhouse teams. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think let's not discount Toronto, okay? Maybe we can discount Montreal because, again, they're missing a lot of players from their Stanley Cup run, as you had mentioned. Um, but a team like Toronto kind of shows you what a Sharks team can do against a juggernaut-style team, right? Uh, Boston's got what's called the, the perfect line, <laughs> the perfection line. I don't even know what they're called. Marshawn and yeah, Pasternak. And yeah, and uh, Taylor. Not ta he's on the second line, yeah. I think, but... Uh, I always Bergeron. forgot Taylor Hall Bergeron. was there. Bergeron's on the second line okay. with Taylor Hall. Well, they've got some yeah. line. I can't remember the guys' names, unfortunately. <laughs> the I apologize. Brust, maybe. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, I'm a Sharks fan. I'm not a Boston fan, so sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, those guys, I mean, you just named off a whole bunch of, uh, whether they're the first line, second line guys, doesn't matter. Those are all really they're solid, solid. Yeah. awesome players. And to be able to play against them, um, going down 4-1, to one, have a period, start crawling back. Um, I think it shows a little bit of the resilience of the team, kind of how we've been talking about. So the fans that are asking about, you know, how does this team stack up against real contenders? You know, we could beat Ottawa, but how do they stack up against? I mean, guys, I, I think they've kind of shown that they're not exactly a powerhouse, obviously, yeah. but they can handle it. They can. They, they're not taking any bull from anyone. I think it's kind of paraphrasing from Kevin Curry. He goes, if this team. If, sorry, if teams of, you know, even two years ago had this type of attitude where they're just not going to take anybody's junk on the ice, right, uh, I think they would have gotten a lot farther and they've done a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the attitude and, you know, the culture and, and the, the locker room, all that stuff has gone such a long way because, you know, the, the Sharks aren't exactly the most talented team out there. And they're, they're taking this mentality and they're kind of shoving it down the throats of some of these better teams. And in some cases, they get the win. In some ta in cases... They're just making it close, but um, again, something that I think Sharks fans are, are happy to see. Yeah, I think I think the last two years the Sharks had such uh, depth problems that their third and fourth lines were never scoring. Yeah. and you're relying too much on two top-heavy kind of your first two lines to do all the all the all the scoring. And this season, I mean, you take you take the leading goal scorer out, Kane's gone. Yeah, who's going to step up? Everyone was worried that one player wasn't going to step up and do exactly what he did. And now the Sharks are scoring as a team. They're, it's coming from different lines and different times and different people. So uh, it's more of a team effort than it was an individual effort. 100%. I love that you're saying that because we're going to start jumping into Shark stats <laughs> right here. So Logan Couture, Timo Meyer, uh, both have eight points. They're leading the team with eight points right now through five games. Yep. Um, that's not a pace they're going to hang on to, I don't think. Uh, but, I mean, really phenomenal that, that these guys have stepped up. I think Couture in, in some light, yes, but Meyer specifically, because Meyer is one of those guys that we were saying, yeah. this is a guy that needs to step up. Kevin LeBanc as well. But, you know, Timo needs to step up. If this team has any shot whatsoever... And we had talked about where does the production come from when Kane's gone, and it is coming coming from committee, right? Mm -hmm. well, you look at the at the stats. There's only three players that don't have points. It's Benino Hans on the board over there. <laughs> Benino, Shimmick, and Peterson are the only guys. Now, That's crazy. 
taken into account that Gadjevich, I'm butchering that name, but uh, he and uh, Barabanov just stepped in this game. So they've actually gotten points. Huh. They got points in this last game here. So the only three, again, are those three that I had just named, which I can't remember. I'm not going to look at the board again for it. Bonino, so, Shimmick, and Peterson. <laughs> thank you for glancing. You're welcome. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, it's it's just one of those things where, again, the scoring is coming from committee, yeah. right? Um, we take a look at the amount of goals that are being scored. Uh, top goal getters on the team. Again, you got Logan Couture. You've got Timo Meyer. And then the uh, third with the, the the goal total there is is on that board. And I really don't want to look. I'm gonna look anyway. It's uh, Dolan. Yeah, Dolan. And I know you didn't. You, you wanted to, to have me look at that because you wanted me to call out Dolan because <laughs> you love Dolan. I do. Go ahead, talk about Dolan. Real well, fast. what's funny is Dolan. You never forget your first goal, right? <laughs> okay. Well, for in his case, he's never gonna forget his second because the first goal was <laughs> originally credited to Timo Meyer, and then they looked because it was a double double uh, deflection. Yeah. So it was a Carlson that shot it or burnt somebody shot it from the point. It gets deflected by Timo, and then it. Dolan, I don't think, was trying to deflect yeah. it. His stick was just there, and it deflected again, and that was his first goal. But they didn't announce it until after he had already scored his what would be his second goal. Yeah. So he celebrated his second goal as if it was his first ever NHL goal when it was actually his second goal. So he'll never forget his first, but he'll always remember his second. Fair enough. I like that. Uh, the last bits of stats here. Uh, Eric Carlson sitting on six points. Uh, of course, since Timo and Logan uh, both have eight, that puts him on uh, the third on the list of point getters mm-hmm. for the San Jose Sharks. And then I know the other one is Brent Burns. People want to know about because you know it's always Carlson Burns, Carlson Burns, blue line. Uh, lots of offense coming from there. Burns still has four points, which puts him in fourth uh, on that list. So really, what it comes down to is Kachur, Timo, Carlson, Burns are the top four point getters on the team mm-hmm. right now. Now that's going to change uh, maybe a little bit, I think. But I think that's a pretty good. Um, projection for who's going to be in that top four in terms of uh, who's generating points yeah. for the Sharks uh, as the season goes on. Absolutely. Um, I like that Eric Carlson is not off to his normal slow start. Yes. He's got points in, is it every game now? I think he's got at least one I in think every so. game. Uh, so he's on fire to start the season, which he's never really done in his entire career. Um, and the Sharks kept talking about how great he looked coming into camp yep. and that he's finally like healthy and not hurt. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we've heard this stick before, you know? <laughs> it's just, you, you give him till Thanksgiving, yeah. and then he'll start lighting it up. And right. No, he's starting right now. So this is fantastic and probably one of the main reasons, I'm not going to say the reason, but one of the main reasons that they are um, clicking as they are. And did you ever notice, I, we didn't write this down, but after every goal, how excited is everybody on the ice? They're celebrating yeah. like they just won the Stanley Cup almost. Like, not quite that <laughs> right. bad, but it's like they're genuinely happy and excited and right. in each other's faces and, like, like, so excited. Part of it could be because there's so many rookies and, yeah. and younger guys on the team and they're getting kind of their first points, but um, they just, like, it, the announcers keep saying it. Like, look how much fun they're having and how excited <laughs> they are. I think they're surprising themselves a little bit on yeah. how well they're doing and their success on, on overall. Like, it's not just the top two guys scoring yeah. all the goals. So I think it's it's fun to watch. It makes makes the games more fun. Um, I mean, it helps when you're winning. 100%. Don't get me wrong. 100%. But, uh, yeah, I, I like so far, there hasn't really been a really bad game from the Sharks, and we're five games in right now. You know, I, and I like that you said that. I agree with you on that. I, I agree that there hasn't really been a game that they just look like a stinker. They haven't laid an egg yet, you know. I'd say today's game, but then they came back at the end. Like, it was still... They didn't play a full game where they were going nonstop yeah. and going to win, but I thought they fought hard at the end and, and had a chance. Yeah, they had a chance. Don't, don't quote me on this, but it was I think a, 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 someone on Twitter had mentioned that the Sharks hadn't got registered a shot on goal in the third period for like 13 minutes or whatever it was, mm-hmm. or maybe at the 13-minute mark, something like that. So they kind of went cold to start the third. Uh, but, you know, again, it's that that's even better for me, right? They started off cold. And then they got on this run near the end saying, we're not giving up. Yeah. So, um, again, the, the for, for culture um, and for just having fun on the ice and the guys, you know, really enjoying their playing time and, um, you know, making something of it, not just enjoying it and just losing. Right. Um, you know, to, to start off the season 4-1 and one, um, with a team like this, uh, considering the past two seasons and considering <laughs> who they brought in. They didn't really bring in any huge difference makers. Benino is probably the biggest name apart from Aiden Hill. Right. Right? Yeah. So... I mean, it's pr- pretty good stuff. There's a lot to be said about, you know, a happy, healthy locker room. <laughs> so 
It's a it's a well rounded team, yeah. and the culture definitely has changed. It took three seasons, but <laughs> we are here now, and this is also Bob Bugner's last season under contract. Yeah, correct. So the Sharks kind of set themselves up, I think, nicely because they knew they were going to be. I don't think they knew the first year that they yeah. were going to be bad because they went to the Western Conference Finals and almost beat St. Louis. Right. Um, that next year, I don't think they were expecting it, so they're kind of like, "Whoa, we got to like take a big step back and see what we're going to do here because." The window is obviously closing. So then last year, I feel like it was a scheduled kind of, let's throw the young guys out and see how yeah. well that we do, and we probably won't do well, and we'll get a high draft pick because now we own that first round pick, which turned into Eklund. Yeah. Um, now this year, I think, is kind of, let's get some pieces. They got Bonino. They got uh, Cogliano. Cogliano, like it's, and that's to help change the culture. Yeah. And they got two new goalies, Aiden Hill and Reimer, who is also a good locker room right. guy. So they went out specifically to get these guys to kind of get all the young guys up and going and ready, and it's working. So um, good on, I think good on the management. I'd like to give kudos to the management. I'm not, you know, everyone's gonna be like bashing me probably, but I think it was um, kind of their short-term game, short-term slash long-term game plan to kind of get the Sharks back on track quickly. Yeah. And uh, it's so far heading in the right direction. Basically, what Aaron's saying is, where are my Doug Wilson haters at? <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so there you go. Um, yeah, and it's funny, though. We haven't heard from that crowd in quite a while. Because they're winning. Winning cures everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. How weird is that? Anyway, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the uh, games coming ahead uh, a little bit later on, so stick around for that. But first, we wanted to bring up a couple things that aren't really Shark-related. Something you already alluded to, actually, previously in the show. Um, the uh, Carolina Hurricanes... Doing a little Man. troll job on the Montreal Canadiens. So Carolina, people were kind of upset about this. And people are upset about everything these <laughs> days, so whatever. Um, Carolina like kind of kicked back. They're like, we're we're working for our fans. We yeah. don't care about other fans. Like, what do we care? So I think it's hilarious. I, I'm on board for it. This kind of goes in line with the whole jerks thing. Like, yeah. um, And the jerks thing, if you have no idea what we're talking about, you can, you can just probably Google it, Carolina Hurricane jerks, and you'd Don. find out. Don, Don Cherry, Cherry talked about it, yeah. but the reason what he was talking about was after every home win, Carolina would do a celebration as a yeah. team at center ice, and it was different every time. Storm and it was surge. funny. It was funny. Yeah. So um, he just, you know, he's old school, whatever. So no, he doesn't like anything. So um, <laughs> get off my lawn. Sour grapes. Some of the grapes. Uh, so anyway, going going forward with that, yeah. uh, after he called them jerks, Carolina right away created shirts. Saying jerks, bunch on of it, jerks, or a bunch of jerks, yeah. and it was a Carolina, an actual Carolina Hurricanes shirt. Yeah. So um, the marketing, like they're helping with the marketing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So flash forward to this last week. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Carolina does not like Montreal. <laughs> so they beat Montreal, and I think this is the first game actually for Coke and Niemi coming back yeah. and everything. Uh, they registered the URL to. Uh, was it did we did beat, Montreal win? Did Montreal, Montreal win or lose some of that? Yeah. Did Montreal lose? Yeah, something like that. And you click on it, it just says yes, and it's like Carolina Hurricanes. And it was up for a full day, and it was funny. And then they read, they direct you to like buy some merchandise, and that helps sell a bunch of merchandise. So the merchandise that they had for sale were two shirts. One that was Aho, and one that was Kakaniemi. I yeah. can't say his name. So just. An amazing troll job. I, I, I love the Sharks marketing department, but Carolina's marketing department is, and this just, is just like is another level. Yeah, absolutely. Again, of pettiness that right. we need. Yes. So there you go. I think if the Sharks were to do this kind of thing with the Kings, the Ducks, the Knights, especially the Knights. Yeah. Uh, maybe even the Kraken. We haven't even played them yet, so it had, there's nothing really there yeah. yet. But I, I can imagine that would be uh, that would go over very well. Preemptive with, strike. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm sure other teams are looking in in the league right now right. to do this. But anyway, um, so I was up for a full day. It sold some shirts, and then the next day, uh, they got hacked, and the website turned into an anti-Carolina website and the owner or the gm or somebody came to the marketing department was like oh is this part of the plan or yeah <laughs> did we actually get hacked we're like no we actually got hacked so like okay we're just gonna leave it so they left it up and it's still there and yeah. they else go ahead they said they weren't sure if they were gonna leave it the way that it is or if they're gonna try to fix it because they thought it was kind of funny too right so they're again they're on another level it's These, funny it really is <laughs> and it gets it get, people are upset about it, so it's in the news because they're like, oh my gosh, they registered this yeah. URL, but it's putting it in the news and it's getting out right. there. So it's it's like going viral. And right. It's just, it's brilliant marketing. 
absolutely brilliant. I think more teams should be doing this. Yeah, no, 100%. I agree. I, I mean, for, for my money, Carolina is kind of like that second team for me. I, I really like Carolina. And a lot of it has to do with their marketing department doing these goofy things like this. And it just, it works. It draws their fans and yeah. it draws other fans too. So. We also have no skin in the game because they don't really yeah. play the Sharks very often. No, no, absolutely. No, if they were a divisional rival, I would probably hate them too. Yeah, if this was the Ducks, I'd be like, oh man. What a bunch on. of jerks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, totally. There you go. So I think the Sharks should get on that. Quicker, so, sooner than later. Speaking of preemptive strikes, uh, Seattle, you want to talk about Seattle's uh, new arena. Kind of a cool concept, you had said. When you walk yeah. up, you're actually above the arena. Yeah, so we'll show the pictures here. This is from a tweet, which our producer loves showing. Um, it's from, so you walk in at ground level, and it's the bowl is in is dug into the ground. So when you walk in at street level, you're at the top, and you have to walk down your seats. Mm-hmm. Which, there's some there's some places around that that do that. Not I don't know too many NHL arenas, but there's some other like other like baseball stadiums do and stuff. Um, but it's really cool. And what's really cool, and you can see in this picture, is the glass. So there's big giant glass from the street level that you can actually watch the game or parts of the game from. Um, and they also have two, um, what do you call it? Uh, jumbotrons. Jumbotrons. And they're kind of above the goals mm-hmm. and they're triangular, I think. Yeah. So it's a different look. Um, and you can see that from the street. So what I, they're setting themselves up for playoffs and anything else like down the road that they're going to have massive crowds outside and you're going to be able to actually watch the jumbotron yeah. from the street for free which is cool um i think it's a great idea like if you look at like how often are we going to see a new team come to the nhl this is probably it yeah i don't know if we're going to see more in our lifetime oh. unless a team moves yes apart from movement but yeah. not like an expansion team and they're adding to the league right so this um other than new arenas coming this is this is kind of cool this is this is history in the making and you could see the difference between the seattle way of doing things and the vegas way of doing things vegas was more more showman right yes everything that they do is showman I, the cheesy night Thing that was just oh so, yeah it's so so silly the playoffs pregame thing where he yes. comes out and is screaming yes. at people. yeah it gets old it's like does nothing for me sorry it's just from Excalibur like you just yeah. rip this off from something that's so old anyway I, anyway skating through the night head we're neither here nor there it's going to Seattle it's also awesome. to me Seattle is more of like for the people like look at the Seahawks the Seahawks yes. are the twelfth man so this is more of like in that theme and I think I think it works and it's great for Seattle and I think it's going to be awesome for that that team to really build and, and get things going. So um, kind of a futuristic look of what new arena is going forward, because there's gonna be a lot, I think yeah. in the next 20, 30 years, we're gonna see a whole line of new arenas coming in because owners are gonna want that new stuff and shiny things. I don't, I'm not saying anything about the Sharks, I don't know about the Sharks specifically, but um, just the new era of arenas and, and differences between what they can do now versus yeah. what they could have done years ago yeah and, and I, I agree with you on that maybe not the sharks because they, they're pumping millions of dollars into sap center um already mm-hmm. they've done lots with the lighting if you've been to the games then you see like the, the lighting that they have on all of the seats mm-hmm. to kind of get that atmosphere where they can kind of do fun stuff uh with the you know maybe even like noise meter kind of stuff where they're bouncing it around it's just the led lights yeah. that are on the chairs uh, they've done some cool stuff there they've also uh, you know revamped all of the the piping underneath the ice to make the ice surfaces uh better to skate on and whatnot so i don't see that happening with them but uh, you, you know, we take a look at the Barracuda Arena, which we've done an episode on. And maybe we'll put it up in the corner over there or something like that sure. uh, for you guys to click on. But um, click. click, there you go. Uh, or we had this whole thing with the uh, the Barracuda Arena. And we could see there was this kind of bar behind one of the goals. And it's mm-hmm. just kind of wide open. And you can see right uh, from the bar right out onto the ice over the goaltender's shoulder. So, um, you know, not quite the same as Seattle's uh, arena. But... Right. Just kind of new ideas, different mm-hmm. designs um, that are bringing in some some fans just from the way that things are looking a little bit different from, you know, the typical arena. So, you know, good on Seattle uh, for kind of thinking outside the box. Uh, like that idea of digging down and, and yeah. kind of going straight in and you're at the top level. So uh, really cool stuff there. Hope you guys enjoyed the pictures. So uh, moving on from that, we have something coming up that I don't think our wives are looking forward to no, whatsoever. Absolutely not. And we're both going to do it again. See, I don't <laughs> like doing it. Honestly, I really don't. I think I look horrible. I look like a creeper. That's the point. <laughs> but that is the point, is for people to look at it and go, wow, that's ugly. Why are they doing that? <laughs> oh, it must be Movember. So Movember, of course, mustache only. Uh, and it's to bring about awareness for it, men's health issues, uh, either be it mental issues or you know prostate cancer, uh, those types of things. Mm-hmm. So... Um, 
I don't know where to go with this other than we're going to do it again. <laughs> and Do you know what you're going to do? Should we put up a I'm poll? I'm not doing a handlebar thing. Should we put up a poll and let, let, let the people decide? Okay. Uh, you put in the comments down below what you would like Aaron to do because I'm just going to do the mustache. <laughs> I think but I'm going to do the Lemmy. I don't even want to know what the Lemmy, Lemmy is. Lemmy Killmeister from, from Motorhead. He has the chops that come down and then it comes up and around. So oh. this part is shaved <laughs> off. So it looks like a biker. Oh, I've done it a few times. That's it looks amazing. Disgusting. Oh, my wife is not happy. <laughs> not happy. Anyway, uh, we hope that you'll join us on this journey of nasty facial hairness. Uh, and I don't know, maybe we'll, because we're going to put up on, on the Movember page, right? We're going to have, we so people can donate. Yeah. Um, we'll try to raise uh, some money, raise some awareness. Uh, and I think maybe we'll even have some folks uh, potentially join the cause with us. Sure, I'll see if I can set up a team page. And if you're interested okay. in joining, uh, this will be actually through the website of Movember. Um, so it's the official Movember website. I can't even think of what it is, but um, we'll we'll set that up. And if you're interested, let us know. Just email us at thefinfactor at gmail.com that you're interested and I'll send you an invite. Um, but it'll be fun. And I'm interested to see in the comments what you guys want us to do. Not us, him. I'm doing just the mustache. Really? If you want the You're Lemmy, not going to get creative? You can, I'm. I'm you don't want to do the Abraham Lincoln where hey. it's just the smiley face? Like, no, I kind of like my marriage the way it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that to you for what you think Aaron ought to do because I'm just going with the nasty caterpillar and that's it. Um, okay, we're past Movember. Uh, by the way, sorry, we're serious about you joining. We're serious about you joining us. It's a me. We're serious about you guys joining us, please. If you would like to help, um, you know, support men's health issues, uh, it's a great cause. You just have to look nasty for a month, and you can uh, be a part of the Fin Factor team uh, in some way, shape, it's or form. Not bad, right? So there you go. It's something to talk about during Thanksgiving dinner. I love it. That's. <laughs> Not looking forward to this. Okay, what's after Movember now? What else do we have to talk about? It was the Pride game. Yes. Now, you have information about the Pride game because I could not jam all this into my head. Well, so speaking you of the Seattle Kraken, the yes. first ever game that Seattle will be playing in San Jose is on December 14th. And uh, the, uh, sorry, the Silicon Valley Pride is selling tickets. And they have the first 200 fans that buy tickets through them. And we'll have the website down here. And it's also, if you want to link it uh, or go into the details down below, you can actually click on the link. Um, but the first 200 fans that buy it will get a Pride scarf, shark scarf, uh, for the game. And I'm not supposed to tell how many they've sold, but there's some. They're going fast. So you want to, if you want to go to the game, if you're already planning to go to the game, you haven't bought your tickets. Yeah. It's a good organization. Uh, it helps. It's a fundraiser for them. And there's also a picture after the game. Uh, that you get to take at center ice with the whole crew and you guys will have your scarves on and everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Super Producer Jason uh, has been on center ice getting a picture to, for one of those Pride games. Um, last season, was it? Well, not last year because nobody was I'm there sorry, last year. But, the uh, last season that they Two did years it, ago. But, yeah. Right? Two years ago? Yeah. He was there two He's years ago. He's nodding behind the camera. Yeah. Yes, he <laughs> says. So yeah, uh, we'll flash that picture up. If, I'm sure we'll find it. And if not, I'm just doing this <laughs> in the video. <laughs> but you could see it. <laughs> Uh, so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty cool. It's a, it was a cool shot. I remember being there and uh, watching from the stands as they were taking their pictures. Because you weren't able to get on the ice for... You, I already had oasis. tickets to yeah. the game, so I wasn't in the group already. Right. Uh, but yeah, I was there. Is what it is. Yeah. So uh, another great cause to support, uh, Movember, and then of course, Silicon Valley Pride. So uh, we hope you do that. Now, we're getting on to the final thing here, the games, games that up. are coming up for the week. Now, we have, as we said, one more road game uh, and that is against Nashville Predators. How are you feeling about the Nashville Predators these days? I, I know you're more into fantasy, so you're more in tune with all the different yeah. teams and all the different players. I tend to only focus on Team Teal. So how are you feeling about Nashville Predators, um, given that the Sharks have been playing fairly well? Uh, still a good team. Um, they've had uh, was it Yuri, or UC Saros took over as the goaltender. Uh, he was the backup for a number of years to Peke Rene, who just retired this year coming into this year, so he's no longer there. So Soros took over the team, and he's a very good goalie, had a very good mentor for a long time. Um, so this team is still a very good team. It's going to be hard fought. Um, I don't think that it will be as hard as Boston, I would say, if that's accurate. Okay. But uh, I think they're, uh, they're still good and a dangerous team. Um, to me, I feel like the Sharks have always had Nashville's number, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Um, so the crowd will probably be fired up to play against the Sharks and wanting to beat them because it's kind of like um, 
I'd say for a number of years when Detroit Red Wings always beat the Sharks, and mm-hmm. it was just when they come into town, you're just like, <laughs> get off my lawn. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll be a good game, and I think um, <laughs> I, I would expect the way that the Sharks have been playing, I would expect a win here. Okay. How about that? A tight win. A tight win, okay. absolutely. Now, do you think Aiden Hill gets to start again, or do you think they go to Reimer? That's a good question. I think they're going to go back to Aiden Hill. Okay. Because Reimer got the last 20 minutes in. Um, so Aiden Hill will be more refreshed on that road trip. Yeah. And no. then I would say next would be Montreal at home on <laughs> Thursday. So that I could see Reimer going in. Okay. Um, just to give Aiden Hill a break, I think. Yeah, and I think uh, that they had just beat Montreal five uh, nothing in Montreal's arena. I think it's, yeah. it it makes sense, you know, to to do it in that order. Uh, have Aiden Hill start the first game, throw yeah. Reimer in for the second. I don't think most people in the league thought Montreal would be this poor either. So I That's think uh, now they're kind of like adjusting, like okay, this is a good team to throw your. Not that I'm not saying Reimer's a bad goalie, but your you're backup, backup to right? to give a rest to your to your one A guy. 100%. So that's that's what I feel like. That's what would happen. I'm probably absolutely 100 percent wrong. <laughs> we'll see what what Bugner goes with, but uh, that's what I think I would do if I were the coach. Okay. And then the uh, final game is on Saturday. Uh, it's a it's a weird one. It's a 4 p.m. Yeah, start. and it's again against the Winnipeg Jets, right. which we just played at home for the home opener. We were there at that game. Yeah, and then we're, we're done playing Winnipeg for the year. I know. Isn't yeah. that kind of weird? Or we got one more in Winnipeg? No, I think you only play each team twice except for the divisionals and, and the conference teams. Did we already play We already play in Winnipeg? thought so, yeah. We played the home. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> we'll be playing Winnipeg on Saturday, and it's going to start at 4 o'clock, and it'll be at SAP Center. Um, again, Winnipeg is a team that, you know, they've got some pretty strong players, and they've got Lurch. And Dilly Dilly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so then, yeah, no, that was the game. It was yeah. the home game Winnipeg. You're right. Yeah, we there were there. A hundred percent. Okay. So, uh, yeah, no, th- there's there's a few players on there, again, that are you know pretty solid. Hellebuck didn't impress me uh, that first game. He is not enough. He is not doing very well to start the season. Yeah. For a guy that's like, not just to against be... the Sharks, but against other teams, he's been suspect. For a guy that's supposed to be kind of at the upper crust of the league, it's kind of faltering. Still right good now. goalie. Yeah. I think he's, it's just that they had a bunch of guys go through COVID too, COVID sure, protocol. Sure. So uh, they were missing some guys in their lineup, especially right after they played the Sharks. They had a couple more guys go on, like Blake Wheeler and Shifley, I think, missed the game against the Sharks. No, he was there. Oh, he was there? Yeah, he was there. Um, there was one other guy that also went on the protocol, but. Anyway, they're coming back this week, so uh, they're going to be, I think, a stronger team than when we first saw them. Stronger team, hopefully a little bit rusty. Uh, That's what the Sharks fans can uh, can hope for there. Just the 4 p.m. starts weird, though. It is. Eh, It's it's annoying. uh, And you know what? Even the the game today that they played, it was a a 1 1 p.m. Boston time game. Yeah, and that's more normal than a 4 p.m. to me. But it, the, you know, it was after a back to back. They get one day, but they're still traveling, and then it's a one p.m. instead of a, like a later on. It that was a goofy one. But yeah, like we said, a four p.m. start for that one. So, but it is nice they were able to get out of Boston early to get to Nashville. So, okay. assuming they left today, yeah, uh, then there will be a little bit more rested than you know. That's a couple time zones right there. Awesome. Yeah, love it. Okay, well, I think that kind of wraps up the show there, doesn't it? We all good? I think so. Okay. Well, guys, we uh, thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed uh, all the topics we talked about there. Uh, please remember to throw your comments down there for any of the things that we've talked about here, especially for Aaron's mustache. Uh, let us know how nasty you really would like it to look. Cool. Uh, and let us know if you're going to be attending the uh, the Silicon Valley Pride game. Uh, if you're going to be joining us uh, with the Movember uh, thing, if you're going to be joining the team there. God, gosh, it would be nice, though, to have more than just the two of us on the team. You really get right. some... Yeah. Some uh, support going for, for a really good cause. Really gross pictures, and we'll post them on our show <laughs> every week. And with that, we'll go ahead and leave you there. So for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.